In the world of real estate, finding the right client is never an easy task. So if there is anybody telling you that it is easy, well, I guess the person is just pulling your legs or just joking with you because, you know, you need to put in a lot of work when it comes to getting the right client for the right property. Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. So on today's episode, we will be looking at identifying the right client for the right property. It is not everybody that is your client. And before um, somebody becomes your client, they have to be your prospect. So how do you identify who your prospect is? How do you know that, okay, this person can move from being your prospect to your client? So we're gonna be looking at that today. If you're just joining me for the very first time, please click on the subscribe button and you can also comment what you think about this video and also you share it. So if you're a returning subscriber, thank you for always coming back on this channel. It really means a lot to me. So, so first off, we need to understand the term prospect. So who is your prospect and who is your client? So your prospect or a prospect is someone who is um, an intending buyer, someone who is showing interest in your property that, okay, I love this property. I want to buy the property, but the person has not dropped um any money has not paid for the property that they are interested in so that prospect becomes a client when they have bought from you so a client now is someone that has bought a property from you so it's more like you know, when you say this person is my customer so in real estate terms we don't call them customers we call them clients so this person is my customer yeah that is this person comes to buy from me this person is always coming to buy from me so in real estate terms you call them client this person has bought from you before and the fact that the person is a returning buyer the person has become your client so for a prospect they haven't bought from you they are intending buyers so in the early days of my career in the real estate industry i had this mindset of um, you know the people who are most likely to buy from you the first point of um, people you need to reach out to when it comes to buying um, real estate is your family so your family your friends you know people in your church people in your school you know this um the small cycle you need in our society those people you can have direct access to at first so these are the people you need to first off start in marketing what you are selling so this actually made me to always want to now give out my number or my contact or my card to people so anybody that i see and the person looks at me and be like oh hi i'm like hi so hi i'm like oh, i'm fine like what do you do and i'm like oh i work with a real estate company you know i sell houses i sell properties and they'll be like oh okay that's fine can i have my card please so that's the first point of now you're meeting people on the streets okay you can meet them anywhere you can meet them in the church like i was saying so i always give out my numbers to people i always give out my cards to people now me giving out my numbers or my cards to people does that guarantee that these people that i'm giving out my information to will be the ones that will buy from me it doesn't guarantee that they would buy from me so there are, it has its advantages and it has its disadvantages now the advantage of giving out your contact is this person in question will get to know you more in the industry will get to know you as a real estate personnel or as a real estate professional so two things will either happen is either they buy from you or they refer you to people who can actually buy from you now the disadvantage of giving out your contact to just anybody is there are times that you tend to attract the unserious buyers there are a whole lot of unserious buyers now i have um now there is a number obviously there is a number that you give out to do that okay this is my business line you need to even when you give out your business line to some certain people they tend to waste your time so now you're not just identifying who your client is you're identifying who time wasters are because there are a lot of time wasters there are serious buyers everywhere so let me let me share the story so recently recently i met this i met somebody this person walked up to me and like oh i like the way you look i like the way you dress you know you're coming from work and i'm like yeah okay uh, um, please my name is this and i'm this and i'm looking at him and i'm like 
this person looks good or this person you know even with what he told me that he was doing i was like okay i think this person can actually buy what i'm selling now the thing with being a, a, um, a real estate agent or a realtor anybody you see you're already profiling the person okay so we work where we're profiling people when you're profiling them you're wanting to know who they are where they work you know because everybody we see has to be a client to us so if you're not a client then we don't have there is nothing that i can offer you and there's nothing that you can offer me so he spoke to me i was like uh, okay then i profiled him and okay this person can actually you know he might be interested in what i have to offer him so i exchanged my contacts to him we then got talking every time he's talking i'm talking about what i want from what i want to give him what he needs to know about okay the value of him investing in so so and so place it turns out that this person is actually not who he is so now this is just the aspect of me saying that even when you give out your contact to some people they tend not to be the people that can actually buy from you they have their own agenda okay so when you notice people like this that are taking you away from the conversations of buying a property or the conversations of what you want them to get involved in then they are not your clients so you need to do what de-associate yourself from them so now let's look at the six ways you can identify your prospects like i said a prospect is a potential buyer so the first one is research and segmentation so you need to make a carry out your research on the intending buyer or a prospect like i mentioned before you need to profile them that is one attribute of a good real estate personnel so you need to profile who they are find out the industry that they belong to find out their business size find out their pain points okay find out their needs get to know if what you're offering them if they are in need of your products or your services so that's the only way you can know that okay this person can actually be my my, my clients or can buy from me that kind of situation active listening so when you communicate with a prospect you need to um, pay attention to what their problem is you need to pay attention to their challenges you need to pay attention to their goals okay so you don't just go and meet a prospect while they are talking to you or telling you okay this is actually what my issue is this is actually what my problem is you're saying something different you're only just telling them that no you must buy this property you must buy this property this property is this person is in this location nobody wants to be taxed like that so a good um, real estate professional would need to be a good active listener so when you listen to them you will be able to prefer solutions to them you will be able to see or meet their pain points understand their pain points and then know okay this should have these challenges and this is your goals okay this is what i think you should do this is the aspect that i think you should follow so when you are able to you know pay attention to little details like that then your prospects will pay attention to you too so another way of identifying your prospect is through engagement and communications and you can achieve this through various channels like the social media platforms, emails, calls, in-person meetings, you know, when you meet them physically. So achieving this, having communications with them, engaging with them will determine their interest level. You're going to find out that if this person is actually interested in this property that you're talking about. So that's when you know, okay, this prospect is the right prospect for this property that you are trying to sell to them. So are they asking you questions like wanting to know uh, more about the product or the services or are they also curious about the benefits of their investment? So you're going to find out through these channels of um, communication by talking to them through emails, making calls with them, seeing them physically. So that's one good way of finding out or knowing or identifying who your client is. Always ask qualifying questions. So many, many of us make or most of us make mistakes like this we just see a prospect we're just going straight to you have to buy this property this property is good this property is selling for this 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 no always ask qualifying and um, questions these qualifying questions will help you to understand 
who your prospect is will help you to understand who you are dealing with now qualifying questions like timeline timeline of properties timeline of them um, delivering their own process what is the time frame that they will want their property to be delivered to their budget what amount of money do they have can they pay um, outrightly or can they pay on instrumental um instrumental basis so you need to ask questions like this so like i mentioned the budget the timeline and also decision making do they have the decision uh, making power to buy a property from you so if you can find out this if you can ask questions like this then you have the right person with you now let me talk about decision making decision making um, is a vital like, aspect in figuring how out or finding out who your prospect is and if he is eventually going to buy from you so i have a little story but there is this um, client i took to um, to a property at a time i took to the site at the time so this property this um, client showed interest in the property he likes the property he went with me for an inspection he saw the available unit i was like okay that he would want this three bedroom terrace and all of that so we did everything we came back to the office you know i gave to him his um i gave to him a, a subscription form for him to fill and this subscription form it contains um how he's going to make payments the days he's going to because he said he was not going to pay outrightly that he's going to pay on instrumental basis and we have um, the first installment that you can pay within a period of time so yeah so he was like this is okay it was fine i was happy that yeah at least you have succeeded in going with me for an inspection right everybody would want or every um, um real estate agent would be happy if they successfully take a client to the site so that's how he left days um, later the days he promised that he was going to you know pay his first installment i was calling him mind you i have been keeping up with him making sure that oh he knows that hi i'm still here hi you know you went to the side i was keeping up with the relationship now the day for the first money to drop i didn't see this man i didn't hear nothing from him now days later after that day i called him eventually he then picked my call and was not telling me that Oh, that the problem is he cannot continue with the process he cannot continue with the process because his wife so this is why i'm saying that you need to find out if this person you're dealing with has the decision making power if there is a third party in the decision making of um, your prospects buying a property then you might be having a hard time there might be a problem and you might not really like it now the last one on my list is budget alignment you sure don't want to be having conversations with somebody that does not have the money to pay for the products or the services that you are going to be rendering to the person you don't want to go through the stress of um, wasting your time you don't want to go through um, such activities after talking from morning to night after saying that oh this property is selling for this this is the location this is why then you're giving the person the benefit of investing in this place the return on investment of what that person is going to enjoy if they invest after all of you talk and then you realize that the person's budget does not align with the price of the property that you're selling that's a very big mistake so always find out if this prospect meets your budget so if the prospect that you're talking to meet your, meet your budget, then that person is your prospect. Then you've been able to identify that, okay, this person is the right person for this property. So that is that. So I've come to the end of this episode and this is just a part one to this particular topic. So I'll be having a part two of how to identify your prospect because it's very important when it comes to real estate, when it comes to knowing who you're selling to so stay tuned for my part two meanwhile do not forget to share do not forget to subscribe do not forget to like and you can also subscribe again <laughs> all right so i've come to the end of this select on me wait next time bye for now